What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. In today's video, I want to give you guys the information pertaining to the new batch of Limit Break characters that are going to be arriving on One Piece Treasure Cruise Global as of March 12th at 4 a.m. PST time. So, uh, News O'Clock has just come around and there is a new notice board from the admin stating that a new batch of Limit Break characters are going to be arriving and uh, there's actually quite a, a decent amount of characters here that we're going to be talking about. Now, I don't actually remember like when the last Last batch of limit break characters came out i feel like february didn't have a new batch of limit break characters so i feel like it's been like two months since a new batch of limit breaks so finally we're going to be able to talk about these characters for me personally it's kind of weird because i don't have many potions on my account right now so i'm hoping that you know during the treasure map you can get a lot of good potion drops but anyways in this video as i said we're going to go through every single character that's on this list and i'll just give you guys my opinions on whether or not it's going to be worth limit breaking or not so let's go ahead and get straight into it there are a lot of characters to discuss in this particular video and the first character we're going to be discussing is Red Flag X Drake, which is like one of the oldest rare recruits uh, in the entire game. So X Drake is an int character, int powerhouse fighter. Uh, his limit break stats are still pretty weak. I mean, four, nearly 4,000 health is pretty good for an old limit break, but... 1200 not even 1200 attack is just ridiculous his special ability deals 10 times his attack and int damage to all enemies and also protects from defeat as long as you're above 50 percent hp when you activate the special like just just looking at the special ability alone like there's no reason to go ahead and, and just do it just for the for the specific special ability however he does get a good crewmate ability making sight always beneficial for fighter uh and powerhouse characters that's actually a very very good limit break ability however the character is bad so i really just wouldn't suggest it uh he gets the side damage reduction ability and reduce no healing yeah this character is just bad like just just don't do it according to the news post it says the next character is going to be jewelry bonnie so bonnie again a very very old rare recruit character i personally have never ever used this character at all i don't even remember what she does she does get an extra socket up to five uh very very weak stats decent recovery of course uh she gets the potential ability or the limit break abilities of boosting amount healed from recovery orbs by 50 each which is pretty low i believe like legend shirahoshi or legend uh not legend man cherry uh rare recruit man cherry i believe uh heals for a lot as well and her secondary one states if she has a recovery orb and you hit a perfect you keep it for the next turn i, I wish that would have it would have stated if you hit a perfect or a good or a great like you just continuously keep recovery orbs on the character i feel like that would have been amazing uh, but either way that's not really an amazing ability and for two turns boost the amount healed by recovery orbs by 1.5 then two times, then 2.5 times from the third crew member onwards. Yeah, it's it's not a very good special ability at all. Uh, she doesn't get any cooldown reduction, and she gets reduced no healing and cooldown reduction. Yeah, again, not a very useful character to limit break. I wouldn't suggest it. All right, so the next one is a legend character, Sengoku the Buddha. Okay, that's an interesting one. Uh, look... Sengoku, we all know the meme about Sengoku and, and how bad of a legend he really is. Uh, so with his limit break, he gets a lot of health actually, a decent attack stat overall, pretty good recovery stat as well. Uh, captain ability obviously does not change. He gets two limit break uh, sailor abilities. First one is boosting the attack and health of characters that are 29 cost or lower by 100. That's pretty decent, but again, that. Like that's the reason why this character is as bad as he is. His secondary one makes int orbs beneficial for all characters. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Like not gonna lie i'm not gonna front that's <laughs> that's a pretty good crewmate ability secondary one oh well he's actually a special ability as we already know uh it does damage 1.5 times attack boost and giving matching orbs to 29 costs or lower <sighs> 12 turn cooldown though he gets two turns of cooldown reduction which is okay uh and for his potential abilities he gets slot bind self reduction critical hit and enrage those three abilities are all very very good to have on a, on a legend character um look no I, I just i wouldn't suggest it at all he's just not a good character unless if you're using sengoku for like everything there's no reason to limit break him but like yeah in most cases you just don't ever use sengoku if you're one of those people that use sengoku then limit break him but honestly uh, he's just not a good character okay so the next character under sengoku is emporio ivankov so id six seven five so i believe that is the old school free spirit one right uh, it is. Okay, this character is actually, like, still to this date, even though this character is so old, a very nice character to have on, like, really high difficulty content because of the healing, gets rid of poison, and also the damage reduction effect. So, this character is great. Five socket spots, which is pretty good. 
Um, a little bit of a health increase, uh, 100 attack and 75 recovery. So that's actually quite good because uh, it's based off, yeah, the, the recovery is based off of this character statistics. So any type of a way to increase that recovery is always going to be really nice to have. Uh, for the sailor abilities, first one is reducing blindness by three turns, which is actually somewhat useful. I'm not going to see it in every piece of content, but whenever you do get blinded and you have some way to get rid of that, it just helps you out a little bit. And the secondary one states that when your health is below a certain threshold at the start of the turn, boost recovery of all characters by 50. That is actually pretty interesting, right? Because if you activate the special ability when you're below a certain threshold to heal, I believe this 50 will get ad added to this, which means that your healing will be overall more. So I think that that actually works very well for this character's favor. Uh, no turns of cooldown reduction, which I feel would have been amazing to have uh, for the uh, special abilities, for the potential abilities. Uh, side damage reduction and pinch healing. Okay, that's even better. Wow. Okay, this character's really, really cool. I think that so far out of all the characters we've discussed, this is by far the best character, I believe, to limit break. Not only do you get that additional recovery to, for the healing, but those potential, those, the potential abilities are great, but the sailor abilities are going to help you even more with just which is beating content just a really useful unit to have so out of the unit so far like ivankov is definitely the best one so after we have ivankov we have kobe hero of the battlefield id 860 which is the coliseum version okay i was wondering if it was the coliseum or is it like the uh the uh, the, the, the kobe with the akanu batch either way uh this kobe here five socket spots he, he gets a little bit of statistical increases his sailor abilities will go ahead and boost the stats of uh, of uh, only himself by 50 okay that's interesting and boosting man healed from recovery or is by 200 that's pretty significant that is a very very sizable increase 200 heals insane uh chase adjacent orbs into recovery which again is pretty nice and if the special is activated when you have more than 50 percent health you protect from defeat um so it's kind of like a buff version of the first character we talked about with x drake this character is much better than the x drake character he gets three turns of cooldown reduction for his potential abilities he gets int damage reduction and reduced no healing duration like this character i can see maybe some usage on like nl teams but in a lot of cases there aren't that much there isn't really that much room on an nl team to like put this guy in it he's kind of just outdated and you just don't really need him anymore. So honestly, I wouldn't suggest limit breaking this character. Following Kobe, we have Security Chief Miss Sadie, which I believe uh, is also the uh, Coliseum Sadie. So this character, this character came out a long time ago on Global. Oh my God, that artwork is insane. Um, she's a quick free spirit striker. Stats, pretty mediocre, as you'd expect from an old Coliseum character. Uh, first sailor ability boost, base attack, HP and recovery for herself by 50. And if the captain is free spirit or striker, completely resist blindness that's a useful sort of ability but once again kind of like what we said with the vankov you're not going to really need that ability that often um she has a special ability of 15 times attack to one enemy and quick damage boost attack against enemies with reduced defense by 1.3 for three turns yeah you've like a lot of the older characters that have conditional um, you know based attack boosts they are like often like 1.2 or 1.3 boosts which really isn't that useful nowadays she goes down to eight turns though which is somewhat useful i would say uh, what are her sockets? It's a sockets go to go up to five as well, which is pretty good. And she gets slop line self-reduction and pinch healing. Like she's just a mediocre unit. Like if this if this unit's limit break came out like legitimately when this character came out, I feel like a lot more people would have used her. But just as as it is right now, you just don't really need this character at all. So I would say not really worth limit breaking this character. So following uh, Sadie, we actually have Harjuden, which is the rare recruit Harjuden, the old school version, uh, who is a Psy powerhouse fighter. Um, stats actually like a pretty sizable um, attack stat, honestly, for an old school rare recruit character. Uh, the sailor ability is going to boost own base attack by 50 if this is the last character to attack in the chain. Okay, kind of kind of mediocre. And when the HP is below a certain threshold, boost base attack of all characters by 200. Now that's interesting because his special ability reduces you down to one health. So when you go ahead and use the special ability to get down to one health you get an extra bit of attack to all characters and kind of interestingly enough he is a powerhouse unit so you could use him with v3 whitebeard i can kind of see why people might opt to use him uh he does 10 times the amount of removed hp as damage to one enemy and boosts his own attack by 2.25 for one turn so if you were to use this on like a version 3 whitebeard team you would want to go ahead and use your whitebeard special first but then again, you don't get the effect then. That's kind of annoying because you'd want to go ahead and use the Whitebeard first so you can get the Whitebeard Universal Crew Attack Boost and then go ahead and use this special ability to put you down to one and then so you don't get this boost. You do not want to get this boost compared to Whitebeard's Attack Boost. But then the thing is, is if you use your Whitebeard Special before this, 
Uh, if you, you won't be below 30%, so you can get your damage reducing effects and the despair reduction from Whitebeard. So uh, that's kind of annoying that he boosts his own attack. Uh, I really wish that wasn't there. If it was just reduce HP to one and deal damage, this character would actually probably see a lot more usage, but he is still like an option that you can run. He goes down to a 12 turn cooldown, so three turns less reduction. Uh, and then obviously if you're running him on a white beard team, you get four turns. So he starts off at an eight turn cooldown, which is pretty sizable. Um, he will also go ahead and get slot line self reduction and a critical hit chance. Like honestly, like uh, you could see some usage maybe on a white beard B3 team, but there are just so many other better health cutters that you could really opt to use compared to this guy. So I really wouldn't suggests limit breaking this character so after Harjuden we have Lao G 1292 uh, which is the oh, the Colosseum version of uh, Lao G. So this guy is a driven fighter dex character, five socket spots after limit break. Pretty good stats overall, actually, uh, 1457 and pretty good HP and recovery. Uh, his first sailor ability is going to change all obs to G at the start of the fight. That's pretty good, actually. Uh, and his second sailor ability will make strength, quick, dex, psi, and int orbs beneficial for himself. So you only will have recovery and tandem not matching on himself. Pretty interesting, actually. Pretty interesting. His special ability, though, looking back at it, changes int, psi, recovery, and tandem into G, lock them, and if during that turn you, 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 you get six perfects, change the G into matching. Yeah, not, not a character you're really going to be needing at all. 10 turn cooldown is interesting. Uh, he gets quick damage reduction and slot bind self reduction. Yeah, this character is just bad. Just don't even worry about Lao G. So the next one after Lao G is actually the, the Kobe that I was thinking of before. Uh, 13, 16 is the old school Kobe from the Akanu badge. That's actually pretty interesting. So this guy is a Psy fighter driven. His stats are pretty average. Pretty good recovery stat though. His HP and attack is much to be desired. His first sailor ability, obviously you get it on the character, reduces blindness. Secondary one, one makes Psy beneficial for fighters. Interesting. Uh, he gets a two turn reduction of his cooldown, which is great. He obviously reduces the no healing debuff completely when you go ahead and use his special ability on the max stage, which is fantastic, as well as giving you some recovery. Now, it's actually kind of good because that slight recovery boost will obviously add to the amount of HP that you get recovered, of course. And for his abilities, he gets int damage reduction and critical hit. Uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't suggest that this character, you just don't need this character unless if like legitimately you need to get rid of all the turns of the uh, no healing debuff, which is like the law forest. But outside of that, you just don't really need this character. So honestly, I would suggest skipping this character's limit break. Following Kobe, we have Garp the Fist 1318, which I believe is the Strength Garp that came out with the Akainu batch. This guy is actually pretty decent still. Strength, Powerhouse, Free Spirit, 5 Socket Spots. Really good stats overall. Pretty impressed with that. Uh, first Sailor ability on the character is going to be boosting HP. Secondary one, boost own attack by 150 if he's the last character to attack. So he is going to be hitting pretty, pretty hard. Uh, his special ability gets a 6 turn reduction. Yo, that's actually really good. Deals 30 times attack and strength damage fixed to all enemies that ignores damage negating abilities and barriers, delays them, and reduces the defense of all enemies by 80% for one turn. On an 11 turn cooldown, that is pretty good. That is actually very, very impressive. He gets reduced no healing and pinch healing. Okay, wow, this... This character is pretty good. I'd say this character is probably just as good as the Ivankov character in terms of limit breaks. Um, I would highly suggest maxing this guy's limit break. That six turn reduction is so good. Like you can use this guy's special ability to deal fixed damage to enemies that have like high defense and stuff. And the really cool thing about it is that it goes through barriers. And sometimes there'll be stages that have that. Uh, so in terms of his attack stat, so if we look at his attack stat, 1574, we can go ahead and grab 1574 and we go ahead and add 200 attack from Cotton Candies and then we multiply it by 30 with his special ability. It does 53,220 fixed damage AOE. Uh, that's amazing, that goes through barriers. I think this character is uh, definitely worth doing, especially because you get the reduced defense as well. So you can bring another character that has like a conditional attack boost against defense down enemies. This character is pretty good. I would highly suggest maxing this guy out. So after Garp the Fist, we have Monkey D. Luffy, Straw Hat Pirates, Born Again. Okay, 1404. Let's go. Okay, this is this is old school. I oh, mean, I, I love my boy Time Skip Luffy. Uh, he is a quick fighter free spirit, as we all know. Stats obviously get a major buff, really good health, very good attack. He's going to have 2,000 flat attack boost when you go ahead and max him out. And 490 recovery. That is huge. Uh, obviously, his captability stays the same. He gets a 
sailor ability of boosting his own attack hp and recovery by 75 uh and he gets a two turn reduction for his uh, special ability which obviously is quite good because when if you guys have ever used time of luffy before uh on more difficult content you may need to use his special ability multiple times per run so the fact that they reduce his cooldown by two turns means that you're just able to beat content a lot easier with him uh he gets the potential abilities of slop and self-reduction which is great pinch healing and cooldown reduction okay uh i would imagine that at level five he is like max special when you go ahead and start the run that is pretty awesome i'm a big fan of that limit break uh and i'd assume the same thing is for his super evolution into gear 4 luffy of course obviously completely resist paralysis on himself uh still two turns of reduction so same sort of special ability and yeah the same sort of thing so i'm actually i'm a pretty big fan of this character but it just comes down to the fact that you know luffy and ace is just a so much better character to run uh you know as, as a free spirit captain that is so i i really can't really say yes he's like worth limit breaking i would just say that if you use this character a lot then yes you should limit break him but uh, i really wouldn't like suggest wasting materials on him because he's just such an old character nowadays but if like if he is your only free spirit character or your only fighter character to run as your captain then it's definitely worth going ahead and maxing his limit break obviously he gets 50 additional attack when you uh super evolve him so he's going to have 2050 attack with cotton candies which is actually pretty substantial but overall, um, pretty good limit break for him. I feel like what would have been better instead of the cooldown reduction ability is if he got double special effect because that means that you could use his special uh get the four times attack boost get those matching orbs and then as soon as you run out of that boost you can go ahead and use it again i feel like that would have been the best way to use this character but you know cooldown reduction it is what it is but double special activation would have been so much better for this character so following the monkey d luffy we have bellamy hit the hyena of 1518 uh, i believe that's the raid right uh yes okay this is the raid boss bellamy so this character is a quick fighter driven character he will go ahead and boost driven character stats by 30 and make recovery beneficial for driven that's a very good very very good ability to have uh for driven teams uh his special ability gets two turns of reduction if you guys don't remember what he does he's a 10 percent health cut makes sign in beneficial and a 1.75 orb boost for one turn he's actually a really good all-round character uh and is actually really nice to run on driven based teams and especially with that crewmate ability it's gonna be, be very very good and he's easily rainbowable of, of course because he is a raid boss so you can go ahead and uh get the strength damage reduction and double special activation that is fantastic so you can get multiple turns of this boost and multiple health cuts and multiple turns of matching orbs yeah this is this is a character i would suggest you guys to limit break you're not going to use this character that often but whenever you do need to use this character having double special activation on him is going to be so useful what are his stats like okay pretty average statistics overall but i mean those those potential abilities are very very nice to have so yes i would suggest maxing this guy out whenever his raid boss does come back around after bellamy we have obviously the super evolution of gear 4 next we have a uh, fujitora gravity blade so that is 1595 which i do believe is the raid boss uh, fujitora it is the raid boss fujitora this character is pretty awesome i i used to use this character like all the freaking time when v2 luchi was just destroying content five socket spots uh, great statistics across the board uh his uh, captain ability stays the same uh in terms of his uh, limit break abilities he boosts the attack of powerhouse by 50 and makes sight orbs beneficial for powerhouse great absolutely amazing sub so far he gets one turn of cooldown reduction which is great this guy's so amazing 50 times his attack in side damage aoe that goes through barriers as well as changing adjacent orbs into matching and a two times orb boost to powerhouse characters he gets int damage reduction and reduce no healing so definitely 100 percent max this character out max him out 110 percent he's going to be a very very useful character to have uh in the future he's just amazing and we have 1733 cat viper uh and the bot and the one below that is buddha sengoku which obviously is uh the super evolution that we discussed earlier so 1733 is that the coliseum uh it is coliseum neko okay amazing uh, i love this character as well this is another character that i used exclusively with v2 luchi and fujitora just they work so so well together uh so this character uh obviously already had five socket spots great statistics across the board boost base attack hp and recovery of striker and powerhouse by 30 and boost base attack hp and recovery of this character by 30 so he gives himself 60 additionally um his special ability does not get any turns of cooldown reduction so there actually isn't that much different aside from extra stats and just yeah extra stats with his uh, sailor abilities nothing really too noteworthy here and dax damage reduction and slot bind self-reduction 
Um, okay, that's interesting. I, I think they really should have given him some more. Maybe if he had a Sailor ability of make Strength Orbs beneficial for Powerhouse and Striker, or... I don't know, something making, maybe giving him some matching orbs for himself would have been nice, but I don't know, there's really not much difference with his, uh, <laughs> with his limit break, unfortunately. The extra stats are always going to be useful, because it means he himself, when you are using him, he's going to be dealing a lot of damage to the enemy, but looking at it at a standpoint right now, like, he doesn't really change, like, there's nothing really that great about this character. Obviously, when you rainbow him, you're going to be taking a little bit less damage from decks. This could be useful in some certain situations, but not all the time. So, I would say, like, if you use this character, like, a lot, limit break him, but, like, don't be too worried about limit breaking this character. I don't feel like it's going to ruin your time using this character at all. But, you know, comparing this to Raid Boss Fujitora, Raid Boss Fujitora is significantly better when you go ahead and max his limit break. But comparing him to this, like, this guy doesn't really get that much of a buff. So, I would say it's, it's worth doing, but, you know, it's not really a high priority target for sure. So, that's about it, guys. We've pretty much gone through every single one of the new batches of characters. So, just to reiterate for you guys, if you guys wanted to see, like, a, like a TLDR of this video, uh, Sengoku the Buddha, even though he's a legend, he does get some nice abilities. He's still a bad legend. Like, you can't really, you know, you can't polish a turd, basically. So, <laughs> Goku, I would say no, don't worry about it. Uh, Ivankov is a very, very good limit break. I would highly suggest maxing him out. Uh, then we went down to Garp the Fist. This Strength Garp, the Strength Red Recruit Garp, very nice limit break. He has a very good uh, special ability that uh, is basically enhanced with having less cooldown. So Garp is a, is a fantastic character. Again, Monkey D. Luffy, he's kind of outdated nowadays considering we have so many other better free spirit characters. But if uh, Monkey D. Luffy or Time Skip Luffy is your dedicated free spirit character or if Gear Force Sai Luffy is your dedicated fighter character as a captain, then go ahead and max his limit break for sure. Raid Bellamy is actually pretty nice as well. So whenever his uh, potential uh, raid boss comes back, I would suggest maxing him out that's going to make him very very useful raid fujitora absolutely fantastic limit break would max him out uh, and then you've got coliseum neko who it doesn't really get much of a change it just gives him extra statistics but overall it is worth doing not very high priority though so that's kind of just the overview of all of the new characters that we've gone through in this video so hopefully you guys did enjoy the video and if you guys did make sure to leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i will see you guys within the next video.